Hi, good afternoon. I'm Jim Mitchell with SKF here in Johnson City, Tennessee. Uh, we happen to be over on one of our hose reel lines, and we're going to go over a few reasons of why our hose reels are better than our competitors. So one of the first things we're going to look at is the arm design. So on ours, as you can see, you can station the arm at many different degree. Uh, on the reel, you can station it all the way down. You can station it at the top or either side. And we'll show you how it attaches here in a minute. As you can see, this is very heavy steel. Uh, everything that we make is powder coated. And uh, going on the end of this arm, we have four solid rollers. Uh, they're solid plastic. Um, that we have that that uh, we injection mold, and then here's the pins that they set on, so they'll set down in there like that, and then there's a carriage that sets over them to hold all the rollers in place, and then and then the carriage will either be bolted on if you're buying a loop truck reel, or it'll be riveted on if you're buying any other type of reel. Style on this, you'll get it with either bolts or rivets. Okay. One of the things that I see in some of our competitors is these things are not solid, so they tend to break in the feel. To my knowledge, because uh, these take abuse. They take abuse from your hose stop as your hose is being reeled back into the reel at a fast rate of speed. Uh, to my knowledge, we've never had one of these rollers fail. One other thing that, uh, that we've done is we've made the bottom of this a, stamp, a stamped product, but we've put risers in it to, to stiffen it up. And as you can see, we've got four holes. This hole over here, if you're doing an overmount, say you're mounting the reel up over your head in a Jiffy Lube application or in the industrial application, this hole in the bottom of it allows the bolt, bolt to go through. You can pre-drill and tap and put a bolt in, and then you can catch it there, and then you can easily install it with two hands. And, uh, but one of the other things I want to point out, as you can see, we've added some stiffeners uh, going down into our base plate. And then we've also added a, a rib that's turning around all the way across. This not only stiffens the design up, but it also keeps your fingers from getting in the ratchet. So our bases are very heavy. When you go to a, when you go to a lube truck reel or uh, our lube truck model, this is one quarter inch thick solid steel plate on the bottom. Um, we don't use the, the stamping for that. We use actual solid steel plate. Some of the other things, some of the other things that I like to go over is the size. I've got one bolted up here and you know, some of our competitors, if you need to move this arm after the reel's assembled, then when you take your bolts loose, your sheave will fall off into the floor. So what we did in our design We've countersunk a set of, of jam nuts, so we have four jam nuts that hold the assembly together, and then that way, when you take off the outer nuts that hold the that hold the reel together, nothing nothing moves. So you can just take your arm off, rotate it to the position you need it to be in, and then go forward. It's a it's a very nice feature. Uh, some of the other features that I want to show to you is uh, our shafts. So what we do is we've got a massive shaft on, on our reels, a massive steel shaft with a welded flange. So to make sure the reel is running nice and true, once, the, once this weld is, uh, is applied, we bring it back in house, chuck it up in a CNC, and then we machine off the opposite side so that the thing is absolutely perpendicular. So when you buy a reel from us, you know, you're not going to have your sheave running sideways. Your sheave's going to be very true and run like it should. Uh, one of the other design aspects that we have, and this is one that really sells a reel. Uh, we've never had a bearing failure. We've been producing this product for 20 years. We've never had a bearing failure because we're not using a little cheap plastic bushing like some of the reel companies are. We're using an actual ball bearing um, and we're, we're using two of those so I'll short it, sort of show you uh, here in this example of how the thing's assembled. So first one bearing goes on, goes on to the shaft and then this is our paw. This is actually what the power spring 
connects to. So we've designed our power spring and our paw so that once we put it together, you can wind the hose onto the reel backwards. And then the, and then the power spring will catch on the paw and that's how the unit works. So it it's, it's, makes it easier for us to assemble, but it also makes it a lot easier for the people in the field to put their hose on. And uh, another thing that we did, we try to error-proof everything that we do so that we can not possibly assemble a reel incorrectly. So what we've done, if you put this paw on backwards, it wouldn't work. So what we've done inside the paw, we've made the keyway only go part of the way through. So when you put the key in the reel, it will only go on in one direction. That makes her paw at the proper orientation every single time. Um, then another thing that we will do is once we put her power spring on, that would be the next thing. We're gonna talk about that a little bit also. But once we put her power spring on, we put her sheave on, the sheave will have another bearing, large bearing, exact same bearing as this, and it will also is a large roller bearing. So for our sheave and, and holding the sheave in place, we have two very large roller bearings. Um, these roller bearings can withstand about 50 times uh, uh, more loading than you'd actually have in the field. So you've got a safety factor of about 50 to one. And so that's why we never have a failure. Uh, when, when we ship a hose reel out, uh, it's, it's a kind of thing that you're using the same reel for the rest of your life. You never have to replace it. Are we more expensive? Yes, you can buy a reel cheaper, but you're not gonna buy a reel that's gonna outlast our reel. So now we'll go over to, uh, we'll explain a little bit about our power springs. So we'll set this guy aside. So our power springs, the thing that's the, the real heart of the hose reel is, uh, is your sheave, uh, obviously your, your base and your arm. But uh, the one thing that makes it work 100% of the time is the power spring and your, uh, and your swivel. Without a good quality swivel and without a good quality power spring, uh, that's where most of the troubles come in. So uh, back when this power spring was developed, we have actually two different power springs that we put in our reels. Uh, we have a one for the air and water reels, and then we ha this is what, what it is. And then we have a larger one that's made in the same case, but it's for the, the oil reels and grease reels. The hose, when you pressurize it, the hose is trying to go out straight. So you have to have a lot of force in your power spring to pull that hose back on the reel and to pull it back up in the ceiling. So that's why we have two separate ones. A lot of companies don't have two separate springs. So when they have a, they have a spring design for the grease reel, which takes a lot of force to pull it back in because you're at 7,500 PSI and a very stiff hose, where when you go with a rubber hose and you're down at low pressures, their reel is extremely hard to pull out in your shop. So what we've always done is we decided we were gonna have two springs. So the, the ones with the low pressure will have, the, will have a, a spring that's not rated as high in the torque. And so therefore, when you go to pull our reel out, it's very easy to pull a, a, a water or air reel or antifreeze reel is very easy to pull out and deal with and it'll still roll back up properly. Um, one of the things I like to point out with these power springs, there's a tremendous, tremendous amount of energy stored in a power spring, especially of one this size. And so what we wanted to do is we wanted to make sure that no one in the field got hurt if they ever needed to replace it. And we also wanted to make sure that no one in our factory ever got hurt by a power spring. When we wind these springs, we put the proper amount of grease in them, but we also uh, put a, a safety band across them. So if you ever do buy a power spring from us, which I don't think you ever will, a spare power spring, we'll ship it to you in a box and there's nothing you can get hurt with when you go to put it in the, put it in the reel. So that's a, this is a huge plus. Um, to give you the idea, the way, the reason you see this device setting in the background, we don't want any of our employees to lift the load. These power springs alone are about 16 pounds a piece. So, uh, if you lift those all day, it's, it's, a, it's a stress on you. We offer many different types of swivels. 
Uh, just so happens I've picked our, our most common swivel, which is a medium pressure uh, swivel. All of our swivels, except for our air and water swivels, and they'll be brass so that they don't corrode, but all of our swivels are designed and they have a ball bearing race inside of this unit. So that's running, this, this outlet section is running on 17 ball bearings, precision ball bearings. And we have a machine here at the factory that automatically loads the bearings, automatically applies the grease, and automatically puts the welch plug in. When you get into the higher pressures, your swivel's taking a large side load. And so we make sure that all of our swivels are heat treated, that the components are heat treated, and they're properly plated to where they'll run for years. You'll have years of, uh, of, uh, of a great service out of them. Another thing I'd like to point out is we, in, in this particular model, we don't use a seal on the inside that you have to disassemble the swivel to replace. So what we do is this actually sets down in, let's grab one of these, oops, wrong one. Let's grab one of these. So when we go to, when we go to, this is a different one, this is our zinc nickel unit uh, that we use on certain applications. But when you go to put this together, obviously we lube everything and then this just screws in. So if you ever have a seal or you ever have a swivel that's leaking, you don't have to take a complete swivel apart. You just unscrew this, replace this one seal, and you're done. It's really simple, very effective, very heavy duty. Back when we were developing this reel, we were testing uh, over 100,000 cycles of fully loaded in and out. Uh, we had reels that ran in those tests over a million cycles, and so like I said, when you buy a reel from us, you're buying the absolute best. You're buying the best of materials and you're buying a, a very, very good design. And uh, thank you for watching this video.